Hi everybody, welcome back to LDRS Creative. We're in the classroom, in the studio, classroom studio. <laughs> oh my goodness, I think I was worrying my husband a little bit. I have a tremendous amount of energy because my son fed me beforehand. <laughs> Just before we were coming on, it was great, yay. So uh, anyway, I'm so excited. I've been seeing everybody's names come in. So hello to everybody. We've got uh, Margie here from Virginia. Helen Banaszewski, that's a big name, from uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Dee Dee Castro from Mesa, Arizona. Uh, who's here? Virginia is here. Who else is here? Cindy Patty, hello. Angel's here too. Hi, Angel and Pamela. Whew, she made it on time. <laughs> Who else is here? Beth Valone, hello. Mary Barden. Uh, Creative Cindy, Lori Yoder from Michigan, right here in Michigan. Uh, Margie is in Kentucky. Peggy is in, in uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pittsburgh, <laughs> BA. <laughs> it's going to be a wild one. My, I don't know what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. I was just saying, I, I, you know, we, I, I get on camera and I look. All right, just this is one of my favorite sweaters ever, 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 ever. Um, and I've had it for a few years. You know what happens to your favorite sweaters? Of course, they always start to pill up. So I put the sweater on and I noticed it was like starting to pill. So I brushed my sweater today. And um, I thought it was great until I got on camera and I went, oh no. So my <laughs> husband and I were like picking at my sweater and everything. And then he said the worst thing. He said, maybe it's time to let it go. <laughs> Oh, but I am a little bit bummed. It was 40 degrees here in Michigan, and I was a little warm today in the sweater, but doggone it, I wanted to wear it. Oh, well. Okay, so everybody, um, for those of you that are new here, welcome. For those of you that, ha that come here every week, welcome. Um, but everybody should know that at the end of one of our classes that we do every Thursday, uh, there's always a giveaway. So um, the only way we can choose your name is if you leave a comment. That way we know that you're here. And if you're not here when your name is called, you won't know that your name is called. So you really should be here if you want to win at the end. We do it at the end. And it usually has something to do with what I'm crafting. Um, and today, let's see, 40 degrees in, in is that Calif in Canada? It says CA, so I'm assuming Canada. <laughs> okay, everybody, we're going to get started. So we've been on for three minutes now. We, I see more people coming in. Um, what? That was Cali. It says CA. Do you think it's Cali or California? Well, that's cold in Cali. Well, that would be cold in Cali. Like, well, 40 degree. Well, all right. Did you ever notice, like, those of you that are from, like, these cold states like Michigan, did you ever notice that 40 degrees in, like, this time of year seems seems really, like, a lot colder than 40 degrees in May or April? <laughs> Probably more like April. Isn't that weird? It's the same temperature. I don't understand. Shirley's here from Yorktown, Indiana. Welcome, Shirley. Sandy Yee is here. She's in Michigan. Uh, who else is coming in? Donna Jarman is here. Pamela Ashcroft is here. Hello. What? Margie's excluded. Margie is here. She's excluded from the... Mar what? <laughs> She's excluded from the prize. Oh, uh, Margie, you asked the magic question. Is Alan crafting tonight? That is a very good question because I know, I know that we teased about that a few weeks ago. Oh, that's what that means. And you were waiting for this collection to come out because what you oh. want to make has to do with this collection. So we're going to have to get that in before the year is up. We're going to have to do um, a little husband and wife craft along. Uh, <laughs> we'll, craft along. we'll craft together. Uh, It'll be a craft together. Craft just, along means we're both crafting at the same time. Maybe just slide. Why don't you get in the camera? Everybody sees your arm. Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> he really exists. Okay. We're going to go ahead and switch the camera and we're going to get started. We are going to be working with um, some new products from the, uh, the new uh, November collection. And I'm super excited to be doing this. Who I see another Michigan. Oh, Jen uh, Dykstra is in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Hello, Jen. All right, we're going to go ahead and switch the camera. We've got Robin Justice also from North Carolina popped in. Phyllis is here, reigning in Rochester. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Ginny is in Lewis, Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. I love seeing where everybody's coming in from. It's so, so cool. Okay, <laughs> so these right here, the thank you flowers, these are going to be the focus of tonight's card. Um, I'm super excited about these. 
I love these. I love layered stamping. And so this is a four by six stamp set, 12 stamps in all. And on the back, you can see what all of the, um, the images are going to look like. And I've got to tell you, and I have to apologize a little bit because I failed miserably, 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 miserably on the packaging for this one. I didn't catch it before it went into manufacturing. Um, so I'm going to try and remember before we restock these. But on the back, whenever we have layering stamps, we usually show you what the combination is. You know, this plus this plus this equals this. So you know what to layer. And I failed miserably on this one. And so our packaging shows the beautiful colored image, but it doesn't show you how they layer. So that is something we're gonna have to fix before we, um, before we, we restock these. Um, but it's not gonna stop anybody. I mean, they're actually pretty easy to figure out because you can see that all of these are the long floral pieces right here. Um, these right here are your leaves. This one, obviously, it, it's going to layer up and give you the little veins of your leaves there. And then we have a whole bunch of other stamps that you can use on their own to create beautiful backgrounds um, and just layer pieces up for interest in the background and, of course, a beautiful sentiment. And then sold separately, we have the Thank You Flowers dies. The way we've set this up, we have all four of these flowers together. You're going to layer them up here. Uh, with these other stamps here but they're all together and they're also all together on the die so you're going to run the die through much you're going to cut all of those stamps out or all those flowers out individually you're going to do the same thing with the leaves we do have this extra little flower here just if you want some more accents and the little die is right here um, and then for the sentiment we have true to form we have that that die to contour cut your sentiment but we also have the shadow day die on there too so you can see how they're going to layer up and they're going to cut so we like to make it really easy so you don't have to have tiny little dies for each one of those flowers you can um, you can actually stamp them all cut them all all at the same time and then i'm also going to play with this is i think this is like one of the coolest things that we've done i love this idea and we've come out to camera i don't know what camera it is yeah. zoom out let's do that <clears throat> i love this idea we we did this idea in um, the last time we did, I think it was Crop and Create with Scrap, uh, Scrapping Cards Today magazine back in March, we had a Just a Note set um, that had a beautiful circle die as part of the die set. And then it also had um, a sentiment that was nested in it. And we had so many people that absolutely loved it. And they said, can you give us more of the word dies? And so we decided to go ahead and create a separate um, scallop circle. This is a different size than the just a note. Just a note. This will nest really nicely with just a note if you already have it. Um, so the double scallop, double stitch scallop has that beautiful scallop on the outside, the double stitch on the inside, and then we have a single stitch circle die on the inside of that. All right, and then coordinating with it. So you can use that on its own. This is a wonderful piece to be your um you know, like a new staple in your in your craft your whole craft stash we did the same thing with a square so that's why you're going to see both of these i might as well explain them both at the same time um, did, same thing with the square we've excellent addition to update your crafty stash you know of your, your like your your regular square and circle dies um, they're just really really beautiful and then to top it off we have added the phrases so <clears throat> the square is going to work the same way but the circle, let me just explain. I have to explain it with one of them, right? We have miss you, big hugs, hello, and with love. All right, this is what they look like. These do have a cut edge all around the outside of each one of those. It's going to cut a beautiful circle. It's going to cut that word or that sentiment out. And it's going to fit beautifully inside your double-stitched scallop circle. That circle is the exact same size as that nested stitch circle on the inside of your scallop circle. So you can use that circle. I'm going to show you how to do this when we're crafting, but you can use that circle to cut a different color paper cardstock if you want, let's say. And then you can take your with love that you cut out, pop out the letters, put that over the top of your colored circle, and then you'll see that color come through. And it's just beautiful. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to talk about the different options while we're crafting. But um, you have four different options that will all work with the, the beautiful scallop circle. And then you also have uh, four options that are going to work with the square phrases. The really cool thing is that once you pop out those words, you can use, if you don't want to use the circle, you can just use the letters. 
just use the letters elsewhere um, like let's see here's some like for for example here's one where we cut out the circle and then we use the word the letters big hugs you can do the same this is this is what it looks like if you do that you are the best and then we have black behind it so that you can actually you know punch out the letters and see what it looks like so really really cool the options are just wonderful so I'm going to show you how to do that so we're going to I'm not going to play with the squares tonight I'm actually going to play with the circles tonight but I wanted to talk to you about both of those because I love these and I think it's one of the coolest things that we've done in a really long time okay so this is my set LDRS creative I always label them I'm going to get my little crafty stash out here and we're going to start going <clears throat> so I always like to explain what we're going to be working with um, before we get rolling. I'm going to get some of this stuff out of here. I just kind of started with some things. I'm not going to show it all to you just yet, but I am going to talk to you a little bit about what I've got going on. So let's move some of those things aside. I always have to do some of the work ahead of time to show you what we're dealing with um, and also to save some time because I don't want to keep you guys here for forever. <coughs> I decided to do a little background pattern and I use this really pretty little die right here. Anna, will you zoom in for me, please? Die or stamp? Stamp. Sorry, stamp. Okay. So I use this stamp right here. That's one of your little accessory stamps. We also have a solid circle here and we have this one that has wavy lines. You can use that by itself or you can layer that over the circle in two different colors. Really, 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 really cool. Um, and then we have the little dots here that you can use. As a matter of fact, oh, I, gotta, I forgot to get some of my cards. Here's one where we actually layered the dots first in kind of a golden yellow and then black and just created a beautiful little kind of shelf, if you will, to put some of these gorgeous flowers on with that beautiful thank you. Super simple card. If you wanted to mass produce this, you could do this. You could probably create 50 of these in no time at all. Gorgeous, gorgeous card done with this set. Okay, so <coughs> I'm going to show you, I'm going to finish this one up to show you what I did. I just chose a, just a pink cardstock that I happen to have in my stash. And, and I got it started. I'm going to flip it this way because I want to be able to, um, I, I want to have some space up there where I'm going to be stamping off a little bit. But um, you can see that I'm stamping off the edge. I started somewhat in the middle just so that I kind of had a little bit of a center and worked out um, in one direction and then, then moved around. Um, but I didn't want to have a full stamp at the end, so I did some little fill-in and stuff. And I'm going to show you how I do that up in this corner. Um, I didn't want you to have to sit there the entire time I did this. It took me... I don't know, maybe 15 minutes to do that little bit right there. It's not really that big of a deal, um, but I didn't want to spend our time doing all of it. So I thought I would get it started and then finish it up for you guys. So I'm going to grab this stamp here, beautiful, sweet little stamp. And I'm going to continue this row right here. Now, I'm going to, this is, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. I grabbed a piece of my tape. This is my um, mint tape from, uh, from scrapbook.com. And I kind of eyeballed here where my three and three quarters are. I don't really care if it's perfectly straight, but I just kind of eyeballed and put my tape there just so I had a little bit of a reference point when I'm placing my stamp. And so that lets me know, I'm going to try not to get my head in the camera. Um, that lets me know that I'm getting, see how I'm getting close to that line? That is just going to help me keep things kind of in position. Let me get my Stampendable. I'm going to work with pink tutu. I like how the pink tutu works on this pink paper. And I'm literally just, put my magnet up a little bit higher. I don't want anything to move. Just going to be inking. I don't even care if it stamps perfectly every time. As you can see, see how, this is how it looks when you first stamp, and then you can look and see once it dries. And I like seeing some of those little imperfections. I could ink that again and have a perfect, like a perfect stamped image, but I don't want it to be perfect. I want the texture. 
I am going to go ahead and give this a little bit of wipe just with some water because I want to make sure that it is clean as I position it the next time. Make sure you dry off any of that water and just go next door and we're going to ink up again. And you can see, well that one I'm going to ink again. I didn't get the end of that very well. There we go. Um, this is all I did. And it creates a beautiful pattern paper that nobody else is going to have. Everybody's going to look and say, where'd she get that? Where'd you get that paper? A little bit of ink. You can tell where I'm more, I'm more heavy handed on one side as I'm inking, like I must press down harder with my thumb. Now I'm going to move this page paper right here, that tape I should say, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to turn my stamp, so I was working with my stamp in this direction, I'm going to turn it around and now notice I'm going kind of down the center, so I'm going to line up my little petals here. That means I need to line up with these two petals here and I don't care that those aren't perfectly aligned, I'm not even worried about it. And I'm also not worried about the fact that I'm stamping off the page a bit now. That's okay. A little bit of ink. Quick little wipe. Reposition. I like that it looks like I cut right into the patterns. I didn't try and position them so that I had everything centered. I like stamping off the page like that because I think it looks a little more natural. There we go. This is actually one of my favorite things to do and I don't do it very often. And then this last one, we're going to go off the page, line up that little petal. Pick it up. There we go. Whoops, let's get this. And then I'm going to fill in, see how I have a tiny little bit right here? I'm going to fill in right here because I have white space or unstamped space that I don't want. But my stamp is too big to fit, right, in that little bit of space. So I'm just going to lift this up. I'm going to keep my bottom edge aligned. And now I'm just going to get those little petals. Make sure you've got that turned the way you want it, you know, in the right direction. And I'm literally just going to line up those little petals at the edge. Try and have it a little straight. There we go. And it's not going to give me a whole lot, but it's going to finish up that space so it looks like I didn't forget to do it. Or, yeah, something like that. <laughs> like it cut it off. Yeah, it looks like it cut it off instead of I just didn't bother. So it just kind of finishes everything for you. So there is my custom pattern paper. Isn't that pretty? I think it's so pretty. And you can see what I stamped right here looks darker, but as that ink dries, you have to remember this is a hybrid ink. So this is really a perfect example really to show you that the hybrid ink get, ha, does have a little bit more of a drying time. It is a combination uh, between a dye and a pigment ink. It shares um, different properties of both of those types of ink. And um, one of them is that it has a little bit longer drying time. So I think this ends up looking really cool. I think it looks really neat when you look at it this way and it almost looks like this fun little swirl. Really fun, I think it's just so pretty, yay. I love it, I think it's gorgeous. So you could do that same kind of thing with um, with the little circles that are in here. You know, if you want the wavy circles, you can position those however you want. You can do solid circles, you can do a combination of those and just have a lot of fun with them. So I think that's really fun. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna set this aside and let me pull a couple more things over here. This is what I need, I need paper. 
Oh, and um, all of the white cardstock that I'm working with is uh, Nina Classic Crest Solar White Cardstock, 110 pound. I always use 110 pound. Um, I just like the weight of it, and it's it works beautifully for cards. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you now how to stamp the flowers and the leaves. So I'm going to get started. Oops, let me put that one down. It's sticking to me instead. So I'm going to get the large floral out of here. All right. And I'm just going to lay that down. So when you're doing solid stamping, you want to start with the largest, the widest stamps first, and that's going to be your lightest color. And then as your stamp layers get smaller, um, like smaller and smaller, you're going to get darker and darker. So we're going to start with this one. And the two colors I'm going to work with are going to be Lipstick Jungle and Tickled Pink. We're going to see how, I've never, I haven't used these two together. We're going to see how this goes. I hope it's going to work. I haven't tested that, but we're going to try it. See how we do. So let's go ahead and pick that up. Let's start with one. Now I'm going to start with Lipstick Jungle and then I'm going to move up to Tickled Pink. Or oh, I'm wondering if I should test this. I want a darker pink, so I'm going to go with it, and I'm hoping this one's going to be dark enough. If it's not, I have another color I'm going to go to. But I'm going to, Anna, will you do me a favor? I can't get all this on the screen. Will you yep. zoom out a little bit, please? Thank you. So I'm going to go ahead now, get this inked up. Lipstick Jungle. Oh, so pretty using my stamp pendable just to apply some pressure. And I am, because this is solid stamping and we have ink on a larger surface, um, I am giving this a moment to just let that ink soak into the paper a little more evenly. There you go. I think, hmm. I'm wondering if I want to go over that one more. You know what I think I'm going to do? I don't want to go darker with it, but I want to fill in a little bit. I'm going to mix. <laughs> I'm going to go to pink tutu. I'm actually going to wipe my stamp. Get some of that excess off of there. Dry it because I don't want that extra water. But I'm afraid if I go with two, here's another thing about the hybrid inks, they do layer color. So if I go over it again with Lipstick Jungle, it's going to get deeper. This one's more of a red and this one's a little more of a pink. Um, but I, I wanted a darker base than starting with this color. So I am going to fill in a tiny little bit back with that pink tutu because I know that that is going to coordinate really pretty. There we go. So that filled in, that helped to smush that color out just a little bit um, without it darkening the color by layering the same color twice. So that was pink tutu. I really like how that looks. That turned out really pretty. I'm going to go ahead and I've got my Extreme Clean, which works beautifully uh, with your hybrid inks or any inks. That looks kind of gross, doesn't it? Let's clean that up. That looks a little better. It just gets a little inky. Okay. Wipe that up off of there. That's going to get any residue off of there. You may still see a little bit of staining on your stamp, which is not a problem. What you don't want to have is excess ink on there that can be picked up by another color. Um, whenever you're stamping uh, your inks, if you have hybrid inks or if you have, if you're working with a dye ink or whatever it is, if, if you're working with a bunch of, even, even your dye inks are going to kind of reactivate and, you know, they, they can, um, they can pick up the color off of the stamps a little bit, depending on the, depending on the brand that you have. I mean, I can't say that every single one of them will, but, you know, if you're working with, um, like your distress inks, for example, um, they will reactivate and you could pick up, you know, from one color to the next. So I like to clean my stamps off and make sure I don't do that. 
I'm going to now move to the next stamp, which is the one that has the beautiful um, veins in it. And I'm going to layer this right over. You can see right through here, which is really nice, so that you can line up those veins and everything just beautifully on all of those stamps. I'm just going to take a moment to get that lined up perfectly. Let me move this one over a tiny little bit. Oops, it's sticking to my finger. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave that right where it is. If it's not perfect, it's okay. All right. Now I'm going to go to my, my darker color, which is my tickled pink. And we're going to ink this up. And I may end up doing this a couple of times. I want this to be a different, this one is more of a pinky color. Look how pretty that is. I'm going to do a second one. We may have to come in a little bit closer because it is subtle. Look how pretty. Can you come in closer, Alan? Look how gorgeous that is. I'm going to do it one more time, just make it a little bit darker. Look how gorgeous. I love it. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick clean with my Extreme Clean. There we go. So if you had a bunch of cards, you could just take that card out and you could, you know, do like step one several times and then you could bring your second stamp out and do step two with different colors and um, just go through with our next step, which is step three. And you can just mass produce that way really easily. What? Yeah, is there a question? There is. How often do the pads need to be re-inked? <laughs> you know, that is a really good question. God, we got to get those re-inkers in the store. <laughs> what is wrong with me? I, oh, would you believe we have re-ink? Yeah, not very often. They don't. I haven't, I've been working with these, these ink pads. I mean, I do this every Thursday night, plus I craft a bit in between. Um, I think the only one I've had to, to re-ink would be my, my Raven. Wow. Yeah, I think it would just be the Raven. So it really depends on how much you craft, but they last a really long time. So I've been using all of my colors of all of my hybrid inks for well, even through the pandemic. So more than two years. And I and like I said, I ink a lot and I use the same ink pads. It's just the Raven that I use more. And um, I think I'm on my second Raven in that time. So they, they go a long way. There's a lot of ink in there. All right, so I'm lining these up. You can see I had actually stamped in black with them. So you can see that those are stained a little bit, but they are clean. I did clean them really well with my cleaner. The nice thing about having the, the, the staining on them is it makes it easier to place them, which I like a lot. Okay, so I need to select a color to go on the inside. And I think I'm gonna go with some yellows on the inside. And then I also need a little bit of green. So this stamp actually has two different things on it. So it has the two centers for these flowers here. Plus it has a green leafy uh, part for the bottom of this one. But we separated them enough on the stamp so that it's easy for you to ink them up. So Alan, if you'll come out to camera, out like zoom out again so I can show everybody how easy it is. I'm going to go ahead and work with just the yellows right now. And so I'm going to start with this beautiful banana cream pie. And I'm going to get to the two areas that are going to be yellow. I got yellow on there too. And get those into the center of my flowers. There you go. And you can see how it did not transfer that black, right? I'm going to do one more bright yellow on each of those, this beautiful banana cream pie, just to brighten it up even more. Isn't that gorgeous? And now I'm going to put banana cream pie away and I'm going to grab, this is um, olive branch, which is my favorite um, green to use for leaves. It's just really earthy. And I'm literally just going to ink up 
I'm using a big ink pad too, just to go right in the center there and I'm not hitting the other ones. You don't have to have the little cubes here to do this. I am going to give that one more with the green just to make it darker. Look how pretty. Give this a quick clean. There we go. And then I'm going to move on to the next stamp. Oops, help if I put these in here the right way. The next stamp is this one right here. So we've gone from the largest flowers to the, the veins in the flowers here. Let's go here. So the largest flowers, the veins in the flowers. These, you can look at the images. It's not the size of the stamp, it's the size of the images. These ones are larger and then this is the smallest one. So this is gonna be like your smallest detail is gonna be this one. Now I will tell you this, these are photo photopolymer. You can see they flop around. Um, and let me come in, zoom in a little bit more here. Because they do kind of flop around, you might have to, you know, bend them around just ever so slightly as you're placing them to make sure that you get them where they're supposed to be. And they are sticky. They're sticky for a reason. I mean, we want them to stay where they're supposed to stay, but that also means that they stick to you sometimes. There we go. I think we got it. That looks perfect. All right. So. I'm going to go ahead since I have, um, I'm going to start with the green. Now I'm moving up to evergreen to get the, the darker detail of that leaf. And so that leaf one is right here. Okay, so it's going to be the second one. Give that just a little bit of green. Beautiful. I'm off just a tiny bit, but it's not going to matter. Let me give that a quick little wipe. Let's see. I'm going to make sure everything else is going to line up. And it looks like it is. Okay. That looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm going to go to my darker yellow, which is dandelion. And I'm going to ink up those three. Here it is. Ink up the three little spots that have the yellow. And this I'm going to do a couple of times. It's adding just a tiny little bit of texture. But it's yellow on yellow, so I want you to be able to see it really well. I don't know if you can see that little bit of detail in the camera or not. I think maybe you can. I can see it pretty well. But we get so light and bright here in the studio that it's sometimes hard to see on camera. Um, somebody's saying, is that the newest Misty? No, it's not, actually. This Misty, um, I have had for a couple years. Hero Arts was the first uh, to come out with, um, they partnered with uh, My Sweet Petunia, and they did a black Misty. And, um, and this is the Hero Arts um, Misty, and this, that's why it says Hero Arts right here. This is the larger one. I got them both because I really wanted black, and that's what this one is. It's the other Hero Arts. Um, so it's not the new, it's not the new one. I would assume they had some sort of an agreement or something where Hero Arts got to, you know, put the black one out and got to um, have so much time to uh, have that on the market before My Sweet Petunia came out with it. That's what I'm assuming. I don't know that for a fact. I'm just guessing just based on, I don't know, based on nothing, just based on my, my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm getting the little leafy stamp here now, and we're going to put this one down. And I'm going to get my two greens back out, which are, to start off with, I only ever open one at a time because I know I'm going to grab the wrong one if I do, if I open it more than one. So I'm going to start off with Olive Branch. And I'm stamping this just next to it, leaving enough room so that I could put two dies. I want to run the die through one time through the machine um, because that's what I like to do. Give this a moment to soak in. And I'm probably, yep, I am. I'm going to do this one again. Because I want it good and dark. Now, one thing I'll tell you, too, about um, your hybrid inks is that they will fill in. Like, they might look a little splotchy sometimes when you stamp them. 
Um, but generally they will fill in a bit as they dry. Maybe not totally perfectly 100%, but they will fill in a little bit um, as, as they dry. So usually if I'm working with solid stamping and we have larger areas, surface areas like this, I usually only stamp a couple of times unless I'm just really trying to darken the color. Okay, so get that clean and dry. And then the accessory stamp to this one is this is the one right here. It has those little lines. Those little lines are the veins for these leaves right here. So we're just going to kind of lay that over it. And that looks pretty good. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to put my evergreen away and grab, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, olive branch goes away and grab evergreen. My goodness, the names of all these greens, they all just kind of blend together in my head. Okay. Really simple, and now we have pretty little veins. Isn't that gorgeous? Really easy. All right, give that a quick clean. Is Will here tonight? I have not seen I him. Have not seen him. All righty, let's see. So I'm going to put these inks away. Let me get my pink and put the pink away as well. Get out of my way. Clean things up because I don't want to lose anything and I like to have the excess space on my craft mat. So, all righty, where is the lid for this? Here's the little lid. And we're going to put this away. Clean up, clean up, clean up, clean up. <laughs> Flashback. <laughs> oh, let's see. All right, here's my dies. I refer to, Alan it does the die cutting for me a lot of the time because I'm sitting and I can't, it's hard for me to crank the machine when I'm sitting. And, um, so I referred to him as my, instead of my die cutting machine, I referred to him as my die cutting man machine. <laughs> he laughed. I know, it's a bad dad joke, but he laughed. Made me feel good. <laughs> uh, Regan says, do you plan to give us a tour of your craft space or your new warehouse? Ooh, <laughs> did you tell her to ask that? I did not. <laughs> Alan has actually wanted to, um, uh, for, for people who are local, he has wanted me to set up something for people to come locally and actually do an in-person tour. Um, I have not redone the new craft space yet. Um, um, haven't, haven't actually started doing it yet. I've got it designed and I haven't gone any further because... I don't know, cause <laughs> I just haven't. I've been busy. <laughs> okay, so we have this ready to go. It's the green. Do you need another piece on the green? You know, I think I will. That's a very good point. This is tape. You know what? Just go like that. That was okay. tape that I used before. I'll just put that over it to make sure it doesn't move. Thank you. Oh, Mary says I'm local. I would come. Oklahoma's local. Yeah. Absolutely, Sheila. You. You know what? I, let me rephrase. It doesn't have to be for anybody who's local. It would actually be for anybody who wants to come. Um, it's just that if you're local, you can drive here easier than if you're not. So, yeah. Okay. So, let me show you what I've got going on. Oh, well, actually, I don't have to. Alan is just about done here. No, oh, you're doing great, honey. Oops. Lost a flower. Okay. Okay. So, anything that wasn't taped down popped out because the dies are awesome. No, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase. Because Alan's awesome. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give credit where credit is due, right? Ah, it's all sticking to me. Where are you, hubby? You gotta get the tape off of me. <laughs> I'm not capable of doing anything by myself anymore on my own. <laughs> okay. 
I love when everything just starts falling out and popping out because it's just, well, from the paper, not necessarily off of me. <laughs> got to be clear about what I'm talking about here. <laughs> okay, so this is what we've got. <laughs> Sorry, Ellen. <laughs> Let me rephrase. All right, so this is what we've got. Um, I did a little bit of work before we got together. Imagine that. And I just did a whole bunch of colors because I thought it would be fun. And, um, and this is what we got. And aren't they so pretty? I need like another little spot to do. I need actually, well, whatever. It's fine. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so I'm gonna put these dies away. I love that all of those just popped out. We ran the, we die cut one time, only had to line up, you know, each of those one time instead of lining up like a whole bunch of different flowers and a whole bunch of different leaves. And it's just so much easier. Oh, Kathy says she bought this ceramic tray. Isn't that gorgeous? I love that. I actually bought a couple of them. Did I send one of those to Linnea? I can't remember. Linnea, did I send you one of those? I think I did. If I didn't, I was thinking of doing it. <laughs> and it is the thought that counts. <laughs> okay, sorry. All right, so we're going to start assembling. So I have all these beautiful colors. <coughs> Let me show you what else I have. This is my A2 card base. It started out as an eight and a half by 11 uh, white sheet of cardstock. It is my Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock, 110 pound. Uh, Lisa um, Mazalowski is saying, where do we find the trays? If you go to Amazon, go to Amazon and look up uh, ceramic artist palette, I think, something like that. You'll find a whole bunch of different sizes and different ones. I like the ceramic ones. Um, this happens to be the shape that I liked. So. Um, you might find one that you like better, but I just got it at Amazon. I want to say it was less than $15 or something like that. They come really, really nicely too. They're all like all wrapped in like good, heavy, thick foam. Um, so you know, it's not going to break. They're really, really good. Okay. So here we go. Um, eight and a half by 11, um, cut it at five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And now I have a top folding tent fold. Um, and then I took and cut black cardstock to eight and a half by 11. So I'm going to set my card base aside. I, I deal with my card base at the end. I like to create everything on the card topper while everything is laying nice and flat. And then I will put it on the card base afterwards. So I took this and I cut it to eight and a half. I'm sorry, four and a quarter by five and a half. It's basically a quarter sheet of an eight and a half by 11. Am I throwing out a lot of numbers there? I am. I'm getting myself all confused. And then um, I took the pink and that pink, before I started stamping, I had initially cut this to uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. And before I started stamping, I trimmed an eighth of an inch off of the long side and an eighth of an inch off of the short side. And I need a new blade on my paper trimmer because I've got fuzzies. I see that now. So um, now I have a sixteenth of an inch border all around because I did an eight and a half off of each of the two sides. So I'm going to go ahead now and adhere that down. All right. Those little fuzzies drive me nuts. Trying not to breathe to, I want to get this right. There we go. Perfect. Isn't that pretty? Beautiful little black edge on that, and you'll see why in a moment. Um, then I went ahead with my, where is it? I used these. So I used the larger white die, I'm sorry, the larger scallop die to cut the scallop in white. I did not nest the circle die in the middle of it. I could have, and if I would have nested it and cut those at the same time, it would have cut out the center. So I would have a beautiful frame. So that's another option. I cut it just like this. And then I took that die from the inside there, it has that cutting blade plus a single stitch, and I cut it in black. I also cut it in the same pink because I don't know which way I'm gonna go. So I cut two of them just to kind of play and see what option I like. 
And by the way, I don't know what it is about um, Valentine's Day coming up this year, but for some reason I have stuck in my head black, pink, and white. Isn't there a candy that's like black, pink, and white? Like a chewy... Good and plenty. No, nah, well, good and plenty is one of them, but no, I'm it's like a square, and it's kind of like coconutty and chewy, and it's black and pink and white. I don't know, it's oh. just, it's so good. Um, anyway... Neapolitan, I don't know what the heck it's called. Anyway, and then I took the With Love and I cut it in white. Pieces are falling out of it here. Blackjacks, somebody's calling it Blackjacks. That might be it. I love those. I absolutely love those. And they're just, oh my gosh, they're just so good. I love coconut candy. I love coconut. Okay, so this is the With Love. And so you can see that all those little letters will easily pop out just like so. Some of them had already fallen out and I had to put them back in just to show you. So let's just pop all those out. Now I'm, I'm going to set these aside and I'm going to save those letters so I can put with love on another card um, and do this with it. Okay? So we'll set those letters aside. So here's my thinking. I'm either going to do it this way and put this popped up in the center here, which looks pretty. Looks pretty. See that beautiful stitch? So pretty. Or with the black. I actually like the black. I think that just really pops. Really pretty. Okay, I'm gonna go with the black. I do like the pink, it's softer. But I think the black is more pronounced. So I'm gonna put these aside. And where's my flowers? Ah, uh, I am going to, let me see. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna adhere my, sorry, I'm just, I haven't actually laid this out what I wanna do, so I'm just gonna figure it out as I go. I'm gonna put a little bit of tape in the center of that circle. I'm not gonna put tape all the way out to the edges just in case I wanna tuck things into it. Oops, here's part of my letter. And I'm going to see if I can get this centered approximately on here. Goodness gracious, I hope that's good. Oh, pretty good. All right. And I'm going to attach this to this just with some adhesive. You could use liquid adhesive if you want, however you want to do it. <laughs> it's getting jumpy. You gotta hold these edges so that I get this just right because I don't want you to see the black edge. There we go. And then I think I'm going to put a little bit of foam on that. Look how tiny this is getting. No longer looks like a special foam. It looks like a regular foam. <laughs> They're all special. They're all special. <laughs> Pop that up there. So that looks pretty. All right. All right, I gotta get myself straightened out here. So I make sure I lay this on here straight, straight as I can without getting my head in there. I don't like when I pop my head in the camera. Is that centered? See up a little? I think it's pretty straight. All right, before I push down, let me see. It's too low. Oh, it's done now. <laughs> We're going to call it good. I mean, it's perfect. It's perfect. I mean, it's perfect. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of start putting some flowers out and just kind of figuring, I don't know, where they might go. Little pops of color. And... 
I don't know what I'm going to do. Let's see. And then we want to get some leaves in here too. And maybe put that here. I don't want the yellow to be so prominent. Ooh, okay, that has that. I, I did the wrong. Do you notice what I did there? I have the blue on the bottom. I messed up. It's actually not bad. It looks kind of pretty, but not for this card. So we're not going to do it there on this one. Um, but let's see. I want to have a little bit of blue something in here. Maybe something like that. And then get some green in. Pop this yellow one up here maybe. Just kind of play. <laughs> I have this song stuck in my head for days. Who watches uh, Saturday Night Live here? Anybody? Whoever, if any of you are a fan of um, Brandi Carlisle. Oh my gosh, I love her music. I love her voice. She did a song that I had never heard on SNL on Saturday, and it was called You and Me on the Rock, and I cannot get it out of my head. Well, I can't get it out of my head because I'm playing it constantly, but I absolutely love it. I'm learning it. <laughs> This is coming out really pretty. I'm kind of liking it. So all I'm doing is just kind of playing. So I'm going to go with this kind of for now and see what happens. Um, let's see. I'm going to do a little bit with liquid glue and a little bit with foam tape here. Pieces of foam. So. I'm just going to kind of go with what I've got going here and start tucking. And I do want some dimension on these. Works for me. There we go. Let's see if that pink one is over there. I like laying it out first because then I have an idea of where things are going to be. And I am going to lay this one flat. here, I think. And then I think I'm going to, is this going to fit on here? Let's see. This is where it gets a little tricky because I want to have this on here like so. So I only want this to be, that foam to be partially on there. And I think I need to make it a little bit smaller because I want to see some of the pink flower. That's kind of pretty. And then I'm going to put some glue underneath it where it's going to be on this level here. Let's fix this. I could have just used the, um, the liquid glue and it would have worked. Look how pretty! Oh, I'm loving it! I am loving it! I'm loving it! I really am. I'm, I think this is so pretty. What is it about flowers? I don't know. I'm going to tuck that under a little bit. Under there a bit. Then 
trying to remember where these are. Put that yellow. Did you notice I did the, the center of that yellow flower in black? Isn't that pretty? That's why I did that over there in black too. It kind of reminded me when I was doing it, it kind of reminded me of like a black eyed Susan. That's what it made me think of. So this one I want to have some foam on. little piece on here. That one might go, I'm not sure where it's going to go. Maybe here. Or I think the blue might go over here instead. Yeah, let's put that, a little bit of foam on that one. And then this one, I've got to have this leaf is going to go no, I don't like that. It's got to go under the yellow. Let's tuck that under. Get some of that glue off of there. It's a good thing about having clear glue dries clear. I mean it goes on white but it dries clear. Um, that way if you get it on something you don't have to worry so much about it. I'm going to tuck that under there and just give me two of those. There we go. That one off of there. So I have the reds separated and just have that little blue right there too. Let me flip that around. Figure out where I want it to go. That's the tricky thing. That looks pretty. Here we go. Yay! I think that's it. I think if I put anything more, it might be too much. I could always add. Let me just play for just a moment. I have these other little leafy things. Or if I wanted to add a little more texture, I could. I'm not sure I need it. Oof, no. All right, we're going to stop. I'm going to leave it just like it is. Sometimes, sometimes less is more and more is less. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful, Ange. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful, darling. Okay, so I need to put this together now on my card uh, card base. All right, make sure you have the opening going in the right direction. Because I do that a lot. I didn't cut my card base perfectly. Oopsie daisy, I'm gonna have a little bit of a white border. My card base is a little large. Oh well, make sure you have a little bit of a white border on both sides and it'll look like it was intentional. <laughs> See, doesn't look intentional because I have white border on both sides. <laughs> okay, that is it. Oh, how fun. Isn't that pretty? I like it. I like it so, so much. Sharon Gullickson, do you ever, do you ever make the wrong size of a card base? I've been off by it. Yes, I, yes. See, yes. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Drives me nuts. Drives me nuts. But you know what? Hey, it's handmade. You know what I say about handmade, right? Nothing handmade is ever perfect. It's perfectly from the heart, but it may not be perfectly cut in this case. Okay. So there we go. I think it's stunning. I love it. I love the set. I think it is so, so fun. So we created everything with, I mean, the salad stamping, it's all done. The background and all the flowers are done with the thank you flowers, stamps, and the dies. 
And then we had our um, circle phrases and the scalloped, um, scalloped circle to do that sentiment on the inside. You can also opt to do the same kind of card with the squares. They work absolutely perfectly. And if you wanted some other ideas, you know, I've already shown you this card here. Um, I think we've actually got, do we have any more back there, Alan? Uh, oh, we've got one right up there. Can you grab me that card right up top there? Okay. One more sample. There was a square border over there. Yeah. So here's another example right here. Um, this was actually, remember I showed you this card, how you can use the letters, big hugs, and th this is where we, we nested the two circles together. Well, this is where we cut that circle, we got that circle out when we, we nested them. We actually nested the big hugs with it. And then we took the big hugs words and we put it on the inside of this one and we made two other cards. So, so, so versatile. But here's three card options that you can do, let's go like this, that you can do with this set. Isn't it so pretty? Love them. Absolutely love them. All right, Mr. Hunt. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Yay! <laughs> so pretty. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I think it's really pretty. All right, everybody, it's time for a giveaway. Who wants to do a giveaway? Raise your hands. I don't see any hands raising. I'm looking. I see the comments. I see no hands raising. I want to see hands raising. Put your hands in the air. <laughs> All righty, get your comments out there. Give me something. Something. Alan's got to have something out there to, uh, to choose a, a name from. Uh, tonight we're going to be giving away, believe it or not, the thank you flowers and the dies. That's what I featured in today's card. So we're going to give both of these away. Yay! Mr. Hunt, I need, please, I need somebody's name. I have it. You can read it. <laughs> Is that my... Huh? All right. R Y N E. Is that how you spell it? I say Margie. What? Um, Margie. R Y N E. I don't know if you spelled your name right. I don't know. Are you sure? Um, I can't tell you writing. Yeah. Margie. Margie. Yeah. Margie, you won. <laughs> Margie, congratulations. Margie, I think it's Ryan. R Y N E. Is that it? Okay. Margie, you won. If I'm saying your name wrong, I'm so sorry. But congratulations. I need you, please to send your complete name and your mailing address. Yep, it's right there, yay! No, I'm not kidding, I'm not kidding, Margie, it's you. <laughs> send your name and send it to uh, customer service at ldrscreative.com. I need your name and your complete mailing address and we will get these out in tomorrow's mail if I get your, your email tonight. Yay, congratulations, Margie. Well, everybody, it is that time again. Time for us to bid you adieu for, um, for the, next, uh, the next week, anyway. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Please do me a favor and um, give us a like um, on, on this video if you liked it. I'd love for you to subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, let's see what else is coming up. Oh, you might want to, if you don't already subscribe to like our announcements and stuff, go to our website and at the bottom, uh, if you want to be in the know, that's how you're going to get announcements for specials, for collections, um, for things like this and inspiration tutorials and stuff from our design team. Um, we put those out all the time so you don't want to miss them. It's a lot of really, really good information. The biggest thing is that we want to make sure that you guys have a lot of um, educational tutorials, videos and things like that at your disposal when you get your products home. You can get crafting right away. So we have a lot of educational stuff out there for you guys. So I'm including, including these. So everybody, thank you so much. We're going to get going. We'll be back here same time uh, next week, right? Yes, sir. I believe so. Same time, same place, 7 p.m. next Thursday. We'll see you. Bye, everybody.